What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to build a simple graphical user interface voice recorder in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to build a simple voice recording tool in Python today with a graphical user interface. This graphical user interface will be created with TK Inter, which is a core Python module. The only external Python library that we're going to use in today's video is PyAudio. And for that, we need to open up the command line and we need to type pip install PyAudio. So this is the library that is going to allow us to get the byte stream from the microphone from the input device. And then we're going to take that and uh, turn it into a file once we stop the recording. So we're going to start by importing the OS module. This is going to be important in order to find uh, the file name that we want to use because what we're going to do is we're going to have an application, a graphical user interface with one button. We can click that button to start recording. We can click it again to stop recording. And uh, once we stop recording, we want to automatically save the result into a file. And uh, we're going to use the OS module to see if the file already exists and if we have to change the file name. We're also going to import WAVE, which is what we're going to use to actually export the sound file. So this is going to be this library. And then we're also going to import time and threading <clears throat> in order to be able to use multiple threads to be concurrent uh, with our application. And then we're also going to import TK inter STK, which is, as I said, for the graphical user interface. And then finally, the external module Pi Audio. So those are the imports. And the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to create a class for the voice recorder. Whenever we work with a graphical user interface, it makes uh, sense to use a class because otherwise you define, for example, a button. This button has to refer to a function, but maybe this function has to refer to the button again. So which one do you define first in a, um, in a simple script without classes and objects? So it makes more sense to have uh, one object that has functions and attributes and graphical user interface elements and they can refer to each other uh, no matter which one was um, which one was defined first. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple constructor here. So an init, uh, init method here and then we're going to say self.root is tk dot tk. That's the basic tk inter window. Then we're going to say self.root resizable is going to be false, false, we don't want this to be resizable. And then we're going to say self root main loop. And then we can create an instance down here of the voice recorder. And this should show us a graphical user interface, you can see here, this is the graphical user interface, we cannot resize it, we cannot maximize it. Um, and now we can add some graphical user interface, some GUI elements, right? So self dot button is the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to have, as I said, one button for recording for starting and for stopping the recording. And we're going to say that this is a TK button with the following text. Now, here, I will copy an icon, you can go on Google and type microphone, uh, Unicode or microphone icon, this is actually a character, a Unicode character that you can find by googling, you can just copy paste it here. This is just a simple microphone symbol. Uh, it's not an image, it's a character. So you want to have that here, or at least I'm going to do that. You can also take another icon or you can just say start and stop if you want to. Uh, the font that I'm going to choose is going to be just a simple Arial with the font size of 120. And we want to have it bold. And then we're going to have a command for this button. So the command is going to be self dot click underscore handler. This is a function we have to define now. So we go down here and say def click underscore handler, this function is going to handle the button clicks. For now, we're just going to pass here without any functionality. And then we're going to say self dot button dot pack. So this is going to be then part of the graphical user interface. And you can see now that this is already the button. So I can click on this button, as you can see, it doesn't do anything. But we have this symbol here as uh, as our recording button or on our recording button. Then what I also want to have is I want to have a label a TK label that has by default, the text 00 colon 00 colon 00. This is going to be the label that will display our recording time. And we're also going to say self dot label dot pack. This will be uh, quite small from the font size. Uh, but that's actually how I like it. So I'm going to keep it like that. We're just going to have this little um, label down here. And now the magic all of the magic actually happens in the click handler in and in also an additional function that is going to be 
triggered by the click handler because we don't want to do everything in the click handler. The click handler has to be active. We need to be able to uh, listen for new clicks even when the recording is happening. So we want to start a new thread for the recording and we want to keep the graphical user interface running. So first of all, we're going to say self dot recording. This is going to be a Boolean, which is set to false by default. So by default, we're not recording. And this will be changed by clicking on the button. So the click handler will do the following thing. If self dot recording, if we are recording right now, what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot recording will be put back to false. So to the default value, and then we're going to say self button config foreground is black. So those are the default settings. This is what we already have. We already have recording equals false and the button already has the foreground color of black. So we can run this again. You can see this is already black. So this is the default state. But in case we are recording, this is not going to be the state. So we have to go back to this default state. Um, then I'm going to say otherwise, if we're not recording, we're going to say self recording equals true. And we're going to say self dot button config and the foreground will now be red. So when it's red, we know it's recording. Um, so already this should work uh, from the effect. So you can see we can switch the color by clicking on the button, but it doesn't do anything yet. Uh, recording wise. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say threading dot threat and the target is going to be the record function. So the self dot record function, which we don't have yet. And we're going to start this thread immediately. And this is going to be the function down here, def record parameter self. And we're going to say here now that the audio, our audio object will be pi audio dot pi audio in title case. And then we're going to say that the stream is going to be equal to audio dot open. The format is going to be pi audio dot pa in 16. We're going to have one channel, we're going to have a rate uh, sampling rate of 44 100 we want to have input equal to true. And we want to say frames per buffer equals 1024. So those are the settings for the stream here. This is the stream object. And then we're going to say the frames is, are going to be an empty list. So we're going to have an empty list, uh, which will contain later on all the frames. And we're going to say that the starting time is time dot time. And then we're going to start a while loop. And this while loop will keep running as long as recording is true. So we're going to say while recording, what we're going to do is we're going to say data is stream dot read. So we're going to read from the stream, by the way, we need to say self dot recording, because that's an attribute of our object. Um, we're going to say read the data from the stream that we have to find up here. So from our microphone, essentially, 1024 bytes, and we want to say frames dot append whatever we get as a result here. So we read from the microphone, we store it in the frames collection here in the frames list. And then we're going to calculate the past time by saying time time, which will give us a current timestamp minus the starting time uh, that was defined or created up here. So this is the past time. And now we're going to format it, we're going to say that the seconds are equal to past modulo 60 the minutes are equal to past floor division 60. And the hours are equal to minutes floor division 60. And then we're going to say self dot label dot config text is going to be equal. Now we're going to format this by saying the hours with colon zero to D this um, adds some leading zero. So if we have a number like eight, it's not going to be eight, it's going to be zero eight. So for example, it's not going to be 9, 17, 20, it's going to be 0, 9, 17, and it's going to be 0, 9, 0, 7, and not 0, 9, 7, 20, right? So we're going to have these leading zeros here. Um, so this is for the hours, then we're going to add here the colon, we're going to say minutes are also going to be 0, 2, D, and then seconds are also going to be 0, 2, D. And I think it might be necessary to type gas, uh, typecast them into integers. Um, at least I think I had some problems when preparing the code if I didn't do that, especially for the seconds, as far as I remember. So I'm going to just do it now Int hours Int minutes Int uh, seconds. And this gives us then the time display. So 
once the recording is done, so once we click again on the click handler, so if we click again on the button, we're going to set recording to false, the loop is going to terminate because it's only running as long as we're recording. Afterwards, what we want to do is we want to write whatever we have collected uh, to the file because up until now, we have only added the frames to this collection here and this collection now needs to be put into a file. How do we do that with uh, we say stream dot stop stream, we say stream dot close, we say audio dot terminate, and then we get into the writing into the file process. And for this, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a default file name followed by a number. And this number is going to indicate the recording. So it's going to be uh, recording one, recording two, recording three, and so on. Um, and we're going to check if these files exist. And as long as the file exists, that we're looking at, we're going to increase the value, the, the number after the recording. So we're going to say exists equals true. I'm going to say I equals one. And maybe that's not the most efficient way to do it. By the way, I'm, I'm just doing it now the way I think it will work. So while exists, we're going to say if OS path dot exists, and we're going to see if recording and whatever I is at the moment dot W A V. If this file exists here, what we're going to do is we're going to increase I by one. Otherwise, we're going to take that file name, we're going to set exists equals to false. Um, which is going to terminate the loop. And then we're going to say sound file, sound file equals wave dot open. And we're going to say now recording I dot W A B. So the file name that is um, available, we're going to write into bytes or we're going to write bytes into the file. Um, this is now the sound file, we're going to say sound file dot set channels is going to be one, we're going to say sound file dot set sample width is going to be the audio dot get sample size pi audio dot pa in 16. So we're basically putting down here the parameters we uh, used in the definition of the stream up here. I'm going to also say sound file dot set frame rate. It's going to be 44 100. And then we say sound file dot write frames. And we're going to say get an empty byte string and join all the frames together to one byte uh, byte stream, and then say sound file dot close. And that is actually it, this should already be working. Now I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to record um, here this video and also to record my microphone in Python, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to run this. You can see nothing happens yet. If I click on this, you can see first of all, that the timer is running down here. So it's three, four, five, and so on. Now I can click on that button, it stops the timer stops. And you can see we have this recording one dot uh, wave file. So we can go and actually open it up in the Explorer. And I can double click it on and this, see. You can see first of all, that the timer is running. There you go. So I'm not sure if you hear that here in the video, but it actually worked. And the good thing is, this is still running, right? So I can just click again. And now it starts a new timer. And I can click again, and then I have recording two, and it's also going to work. And I can also just close this application, and I can uh, run it again. And I can do the same thing here. And I can close it again. Oh, this time, I think I didn't terminate. So this might be a problem. There you go. So now it's running, 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 I can click again. There you go recording three. And we can also again, open explorer. There you go. So now, it's, and you can hear it works. So this is how you build a simple Python voice recording tool with a graphical user interface. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.